Hello there fellow monster hunters, and welcome back to another video from our series on mythical creatures and characters. Following the votes from last week, today we're gonna cover another creature which is part folklore and part urban myth. Although this one is a bit older than the Chupacabra. Ladies and gentlemen, meet the Jersey Devil. Do stay until the end of the video too and vote for the next topic. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? When you're traveling through New Jersey, you might want to beware of the deep woods. The forest is where the Jersey Devil supposedly can be found. Its blood-curdling scream will announce its presence and chill all viewers to the core. This creature is known to bring misery and misfortune wherever it goes. From a physical standpoint, the Jersey Devil is known to be both terrifying and disgusting. The creature is known to have had an impressive transformation, which does make it one of the most interesting of cryptids, although also one of the most difficult to believe in. When the Devil transformed, it is said that it sprouted horns from the top of its head. The next thing to spring out were the claws, followed by the hideous fur and feathers which seemed to sprout out of nowhere. It was growing at an alarming rate, which was most certainly inhuman, and only stopped when it reached somewhere between 6 and 10 feet in length. It grew a forked tail and sprouted disgusting leathery wings. Finally, the transformation was complete when its eyes began to glow a terrible shade of red. Its face now appeared to be resembling both a dog and a horse. Maybe the creepiest thing yet, the monster had one of the most saddening and terrifying screams which were ever heard, sounding both like a tortured human and a vengeful predator. What is widely considered to be the true story of the Jersey Devil began in 1677, when a man called Daniel Leeds came to the colonies in America and settled down in Burlington, in what today are known as the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. As the years went on, Daniel was known to become more and more involved in the Quaker community he lived in. Eventually, he would work on one of the first printers in the colonies to develop an almanac. And this is when the trouble began. Although the majority of the content of the almanac was acceptable, there was a reference to astrology that angered many of those living in the community. They were opposed to any kind of mysticism, and accused Daniel Leeds of being involved in occultism. Instead of giving in to the will of the community, however, and taking out the references to astrology, Leeds became even more determined. Additionally, when the colonists came to oppose the British rule in America, Daniel Leeds joined the opposing side. He would counsel Lord Cornbury, the British governor of the territory he lived in, and openly support British rule. The community, obviously, was angered, seeing this as yet another offense by Leeds, and went as far as to publish a text accusing him of working for the devil. Eventually, Daniel Leeds retired from almanac making in 1716, and gave the company to his son, Titan Leeds. Titan took on the family business and continued publishing the almanacs, mysticism and everything else, largely without competition, that is, until Benjamin Franklin himself published his first edition of Poor Richard's Almanac in 1732. There was relatively little direct confrontation between these two characters, at least until the 1733 edition was published, in which, bizarrely, Benjamin Franklin predicted a day when Titan Leeds would die. As expected, the guy was greatly angered by Franklin's outlandish claim, and did his best at taking a stab at the new publisher's credibility by calling him a fool and a liar. There are some speculating that the Jersey Devil legend could have been started by none other than the founding father, Benjamin Franklin. It also happened that Titan had a brother named Yafet Leeds, who was married to a woman named Deborah. Historical record shows that as 1736, Yafet had no less than 12 children in his will. Because this was the time period that was known to have been at the height of the rivalry between Benjamin Franklin and Titan Leeds, many people theorized that a story could have been invented by Franklin as a way of discrediting the Leeds family name. 
Another important factor is that until the 1900s, many people knew the Jersey Devil to be also called the Leeds Devil. This means that there was a definitely some sort of connection between the two, and that the creature certainly could have been created as a joke during the height of that rivalry. There is also the fact that Mother Leeds was supposedly cursed because she fell in love with a British soldier. The Leeds family was known to be part of the Loyalist Party, so this could have been easily a stab towards the family. Maybe the most suggestive piece of evidence, however, comes from the very almanac of Leeds itself. It is known that before Titan died, he redesigned the almanac cover to include the family crest. And what do you know? The crest is known to feature the Wyvern, a dragon-esque creature with leathery wings, clawed hands, and a forked tail. One of the first sightings of the Jersey Devil to be taken a bit more seriously was reported by the famous war hero Commodore Stephen Decatur. The timeline of this story is known to vary, possibly because of the confusion regarding another account told by Joseph Bonaparte. The majority of the stories telling of Decatur's sighting claim the event occurred in 1778. Regardless of the version, the events are pretty much the same. The Commodore visited the Hanover Ironworks, located in the Pine Barrens, while traveling to test the cannonballs on their firing range. While he was there, he saw a strange creature with a whitish hue flying above the field. Heroically, he used the cannon to shoot a hole through the creature's right wing. But to his surprise and dismay, the creature continued flying around, unaffected by the wound. Another account is that of Joseph Bonaparte, the brother of Napoleon Bonaparte. This guy was also a person who actually believed in the Jersey Devil. He did own some land in Bordertown, New Jersey, which was known to be part of the Pine Barrens region. Once again, there are multiple variations of the encounter. Some people claim that Joseph was hunting the devil itself when it happened. Others simply claim that he was just hunting on the property when he saw the creature. This thing supposedly took place in 1820. It was only 20 years later that more sightings of the creature occurred. It was blamed for several livestock killings and strange screams that could be heard throughout the woods. Despite all of this, however, there was no concrete evidence that the creature actually existed. After the 1840s, the Jersey creature wasn't seen or heard from until the 1870s, when once again it was seen by several people in the winter months. But nothing would cause more panic or belief in the existence of the monster than the sudden and strange events of January 1909, when it was supposedly spotted by thousands of people. These sightings would cause both widespread panic and excitement, and also one of the reasons why the Jersey Devil has gained so much popularity even in the present day. These events unfolded as follows. It was a Saturday, January 16th, when the Jersey Devil was seen flying over Woodbury, New Jersey. Although there was some panic, it was initially presumed to be an isolated event, like all the other previous stories. The next day, however, there were more sightings in Bristol, this time with the strange tracks matching the description of the creature. Things started to heat up on Monday though, January 18th, when the Jersey Devil tracks were found in Burlington, New Jersey, also the town where Daniel Leeds and his family first inspired the story. With so many sightings, however, people began to wonder if the Jersey Devil was more than just a cryptid invented in the heat of a feud between loyalists and patriots. The tracks in the town seemed to defy any biological possibility. It seemed that the perfect storm was being created. Thousands of citizens became concerned for their safety and started taking precaution. On Tuesday, the 19th of January, it became apparent that the devil was only getting started. At 2.30 a.m., a man named Nelson Evans and his wife spotted the Jersey Devil right outside their window. They claimed in their description that the creature was nearly three and a half feet in height, with a strange head that started off looking like a collie dog, but had a face similar to that of a horse. Its neck was abnormally long, and its wings were at least two feet in length. It was also said to have walked on its back hooves and simply held its two paws up while walking. 
they were able to shoo the creature away, but the event deeply unsettled them. Later, two hunters from Gloucester came and followed the tracks left by the creature for no less than 20 miles. They claimed it was able to jump over fences and squeeze under small gaps about 8 inches in size. The next day, people in Haddonfield and Collingswood decided to form a posse and hunt it down. Although some of them were able to spot the creature flying towards Moorestown, they were not able to catch it. On Thursday, the 21st of January, things became even more tense, when the Jersey Devil attacked a trolley car in Haddon Heights. It was eventually chased away, but the widespread panic that caused was more than evident in the population now. What's more is that the creature didn't stop its appearance with the trolley car attack. Several poultry farmers in the area reported that something similar to the Jersey Devil had supposedly killed off all their chickens. There were others that claimed to have seen the creature crash into electrical lines and continue flying as if nothing had happened. Later in that day, a telegraph worker just outside of Atlantic City shot the creature. Unfortunately, it was still able to escape into the forest, although according to the worker it was limping. Still, the Jersey Devil marched onward on its attack on the Pine Barrens. It was then spotted in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as well as Collingswood, New Jersey. People attempted to protect themselves by hurling anything they could at the creature, but according to those reports, it was still unharmed. Later in the day, a pet owner in Camden, New Jersey, spotted the creature while trying to eat her dog. She managed to chase it away, but not before it ripped a chunk of flesh from the dog. This attack would be one of the most important to be reported in 1909, because it was the first time the Jersey Devil was connected directly to an attack on a live animal. This is the event that would cause the most panic in the Pine Barrens region. Armed guards would be put on the trolleys to ensure the safety of the citizens. Even more posses and hunting groups were formed in the hopes that someone, somehow, would be able to capture or kill the creature and stop the attacks for good. However, even more people decided to seek refuge in their homes until the attacks had stopped, or the Jersey Devil had been killed. Many businesses and schools were closed out of fear of the cryptid. Additionally, loggers and lumberjacks working in the Pine Barrens refused to return to work, until they were assured that the creature would not attack again. Friday, the 22nd of January, was the last day of the sightings, but the damage was definitely done. The people in the Pine Barrens were definitely convinced of the existence of the Jersey Devil. There are still many reports of the creature in the modern day, although none of those, yet, compares to the panic from 1909. Now, for the poll I mentioned in the beginning, I will once again offer you three choices. But one of them is a bit different this time. Because there is a lot more accounts on the Jersey Devil outside of these old stories, I'd be willing to make a second episode on it. If you guys enjoy it too, obviously. So, the options would be A. More Jersey Devil B. The Jinn Or C the ancient automaton, Talos. To vote, simply write down your choice in the comments below. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the infamous Jersey Devil, one of the most well-known American cryptids for today. Like I said just now, a very interesting myth slash creature that I myself would be interested in talking about some more. What about you, though? Do you believe in the Jersey Devil? What are your thoughts on the stories surrounding it? What do you like or dislike most about it? Do feel welcome to share any opinions or questions, if you have any, in the comments below as always. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you a healthy and peaceful day. This is GDN signing out.